I'm Tom Ray, and this is American Bandito. We're about halfway through the first season of this show, and I'd like to think, if you're here and you're listening, that you're probably a creative person, or you're at least interested in the creative process. The really cool thing about everybody that I've talked to is how open they've been about what they do and kind of just showing you how they do it, which was the entire concept of this show. Now, last week I had an author on and him self-publishing. I probably could try something like that, so I did. I've self-published my own stuff at home. I make handmade books out of the things I do. Very short runs, I don't sell them, I give them just to family and friends. Since I do create a daily comic journal, I actually have a series of things that I could put out as a book. So I decided to collect them monthly and try and see how difficult it would be to put them as a book on Amazon. Well, one, it's pretty difficult. Well, not difficult, it's really annoying, it's a pain. It's a super pain. (laughs) <laughs> to do it. I finally got it right. You can download the templates and set it up. Put your pictures in there. Now, this isn't just for like comic strips. I'm saying like if I wanted to do it for like say some flyers I've made. I actually have a bunch of flyers I've made over the years and I could put them in there. But setting it up is kind of a pain. It's actually fairly easy. I'm complaining. But once I got it done, I have three books up there now and I was even able to create an author page. So technically, I am an author on Amazon right now. That's pretty cool. So if you go to amazon.com slash author slash Tom Ray, boom, there are my books. I ordered one just to see what it was like. I really like the handmade ones. They're cool, they're smaller, they're like half pages folded. I got textured paper, printed out on a nice printer, staple them myself, all kinds of stuff. I ordered these not expecting much. I got it, it's pretty good quality. I was surprised. So if you're ever thinking of creating a book, just go go give it a try make you it's i was pretty happy plus it's pretty neat to have an author page on amazon just saying amazon.com slash author slash tom ray anyway this week is a little bit different now i know i've said that before here's how it went down the ad that i put out looking for artists in madison mainly they were people around my age in their 40s well someone contacted me but they were contacting me for a family member. And the family member was actually just out of high school. No problem with that. It's just interesting. I'm not used to talking to somebody who's just starting out, but it was actually very refreshing. She tries so many different things that it was inspiring. It actually made me feel lazy with how much stuff she's trying. And the thing that's really interesting is she wants to be a tattoo artist. So join me as I meet Selma Carrion. Why did you come from Texas to Madison? We had family moving up here, and we figured it would be a better like opportunity, more options. Okay. Instead of just like just staying in one place. When did you start getting interested in art? It's always caught my eye. I still have a participation certificate from when I was in second grade that I tried to do like a duck stamp, and I, of course I didn't get in, but I still have like the little participation certificate to just kind of, thought it was funny. How come you didn't get in? I was in second grade and I had, I was still like trying to figure out my colors. Okay. So my duck wasn't as good as everybody, as good as the older kids. Are you saying like the uh, stamp that they talk about in the movie Fargo, the stamp to make up the difference? For the older ones? No, it was just like you draw a duck and they kind of make a stamp out of it. Okay. How did you draw it? Was it just pencil or did you just paint it? Or That's interesting to me. Yeah, it's just colored pencils. Oh, wow. In second grade? Yeah. That's ambitious. See, when I was in second grade, I think I drew... Well, I tried drawing Scooby-Doo. That's about when I started. You're already like submitting things to stuff. So you got a taste yeah. for it is what you're saying. Where'd you go from there? Like after that, you're like, I'm not going to accept this participation thing. I'm going to do better now. Yeah, I just, I liked it. The way I used to practice, I used to watch movies and my favorite movies, I used to just pause them and then trace the TV. Trace on the TV? Yeah. So then I would have like a better idea of how I would copy it without tracing it. Like what kind of stuff would you trace? 
like The Simpsons or just whatever I was watching. I used to watch The Simpsons a lot when I was smaller, so I have a couple of Homer pictures. The old cartoons, like the old style Mickey Mouse and Betty Boop and stuff like that. You created your own little uh, light board. So did you have like a small TV or something or you would just pick sections of the of a larger TV? Yeah, I'd make sections. So are you in school right now? Like are you in high school or in college? No, I graduated high school almost two years ago, and right now I'm just like trying to draw as much as I can, just work. We've been talking about the sketching and the drawings. I'm seeing stuff where you've done ceramics and ceramic etching, I think, which first of all, what's the yeah. difference between those two? Well, ceramics is more like you made everything You made everything from scratch, uh, more like clay, the color, the shape, everything yours. But the etching is more like um, you buy a base and you write the design or you draw on the material that you have. You got one that looks like a brick wall, has like a, a ghost coming out of a bottle. One of my favorite artists is called Banksy. He's a street artist and a lot of his pieces just like really inspire me. So when I just had extra time, I just kind of did it. So the ceramics, you were. Uh, when did you start doing those? I started in, in, in high school, my freshman year, and I took like three years of it, but I haven't been able to pick up after that, but I, I really liked it. So I was looking at the murals. You have one up at... Yeah, Lalo's. Yeah, Lalo's. How did you get that? It's like a huge mural. Is that all just you? No, I was actually... So my brother is one of the people that kind of helps me out a lot when he sees that somebody's looking for an art piece. He was just like, oh, just go with my sister. Really? Yeah. The owners of the restaurant had asked him to do it, but he was like, well, I'm not going to get this done. So my brother told him about me and he called me and then we just got it done together. Do your brother an artist too? No, he just, he just like motivation. But it kind of sounds like he's acting as your agent. So he's always keeping an ear out for somebody that wants, that wants paintings or murals or something. Yeah. That's, that's actually kind of helpful. No, and so how long now you worked on this, how long did that take you? I mean, how long does a project like that uh, um, set you back? It's about four weeks. Oh, that's not better. I at mean, all. four days. <laughs> oh, that's even better. I was impressed by four weeks. And then who came up with the uh, the concept of it? Did he have something in mind or did you have to show him some sketches of it? No, the owners gave us pictures. Oh, okay. Was this the first, first mural you ever did or was have you done more before this? No, that was my first one. How do you plan something like that? Do you just walk up and go, well, I'm going to start here. And then you just painted and kind of just hoped that it worked yeah. or did you really? Yeah, that was, yeah, that was about it. <laughs> I like it. Oh, renegade style. Yeah. I tried to not like overthink it because then I get like overwhelmed. And you've done more since then. Yeah. Now what's this, uh, the Great Wolf Lodge. So you, you got that set up there too. My friend worked there and after she knew how to do it, she's like, no, but I can figure it out. So then she just called me and then we did the, the head cut out. That one took about two days. And that was just through a friend. Who's like, I know a person. Yeah. People that I've talked to, that really seems to be the way a lot of them are finding work like this. Is just like they know somebody or they meet somebody and then they just happen to mention it. That's actually really kind of fascinating. Now, you know, you've done some murals and put some stuff out there. What would you like to do? I'm not sure. That's kind of what I'm trying to figure out now. I'm looking into a couple tattoo shops, see if that's what I'd like to do. Oh. Wow. Yeah. How do you learn that? That's interesting. That's what I'm afraid of. There's no eraser end on the pencil there. I'll just like go to different shops and then I'll show them my work. And then if they think that it's good, they'll take me on as an apprentice. I'm basically like an assistant for them for free and I'll just watch them do it. And then as soon as I can perfect it on paper, they'll let me do tattoos. But usually the way that we get people to kind of volunteer to be an apprentice tattooer, um, they'll be like, oh, well, if you go with Harris, then she's just learning. It'll be like half off. Mm -hmm. And usually people go for that. So have you been doing this? No, but I've known a couple people who've done it and I've done it in the past. I just didn't stick to it because I was still like really young. So it was really weird being around like these older people and when I couldn't get a tattoo myself. <laughs> right. You couldn't do it yourself, but you wanted to give them? Like, I'm trying to work towards this, but I can't tattoo for another two years. So it's, I wanted to learn how. I'm actually glad that you had that answer. I, that's one thing I've always wondered about. Like, how do you just jump into being a tattoo artist? Because like I said, for me, it's just like I would be terrified because it's like, do you just go one day I'm a tattoo artist and then you start drawing on people? Or are there just people that are 
uh, human sketch pads that are like, I don't care if you mess it up and their back is just covered with these horrible tattoos, uh, with people trying it out for the first time, you know, but yeah, that, that's basically how it works. If it's a free tattoo, a lot of people will go for it. Really? Yeah. I did not know that. So, th- so that's something that you'd probably, you're actively kind of looking into. Yeah. What are some of the places that you've talked to around town here? I used to be at Bicomatics on Park Street. Oh, okay. So I used to be there for a couple of weeks. I won't, a couple of weeks ago, I had talked to one of the guys all the way in Wisconsin Dells. Oh. I mean, it'd be a long drive, but I think it would be worth it in the long run. Yeah. But he just kind of decided that way too much responsibility for him to handle, which I completely understand. Yeah, I could get that. And how did you meet the person that sent you out there? Again, this is it's interesting to me how people meet up, know a person that does something or is looking for something. So how did you meet the person who referenced you? Friends. Uh, I had somebody ask me if I could come with him to get a tattoo. Yeah. And then he was like, oh, yeah, and if you come with me, I'll like tell my friend about you. You also have done some shirt prints. Have you ever tried yeah. doing like tattoo art style stuff as shirt prints? I've had that idea, and I know kind of like what ideas I want to do on shirts. I just haven't gotten it done yet. Do you screen print your own stuff, or do you have, uh, do you have them done for you? I do everything by hand, like just with a brush. Oh, you're hand painting them? Yeah. Have you ever looked into screen printing? No. I have done the stamps that you use to do that. I have a couple prints, but I haven't gotten them on shirt. So you've made your own block prints? Yeah. Cool. I actually just started getting interested in that myself. I've done screen printing before, but block prints, they're they are like a different thing because you're, you're cutting out the part that you're going to use, but then you stamp it on and I can never get it to work right. Like, do you have a specific method you use for it? No, I'm actually still figuring it out. Okay. It's really confusing, especially when it's like letters or everything's like backwards. Yeah, I know. Yeah, carving that is, is difficult when you're yeah doing it backwards. and ugh. You just created your website. I think you did that just recently, right? Yeah. I needed a way to kind of show what I had. I have the Facebook page as well, but it's kind of hard to get people to go and look at it and then for some reason it's easier with the website uh-huh. and it's a lot better displayed yeah so once i got like the website all figured out it's a lot easier to just update it take something down or... but as far as promoting it i mean you're are you just telling people go check out my website or are you doing any actual promotion or anything like that for it no for now i'm just like go look at it and then they'll go look at it do you have any plans to try and uh, figure out how to promote yourself i'm looking Okay. I had stopped painting for a while. I just got back on it like last month. So I'm still kind of figuring everything out. One day are you like, okay, I'm going to dedicate this month to ceramics. I'm going to dedicate this month to painting. Or do you just kind of go like, this is what I feel like doing today? I have to just kind of go with it. Whenever I try to plan something out, it doesn't really work. Yeah. Usually I end up trying to put too much detail in something and then I need more time. Yeah, I can see that. What are you working on right now? I have a shirt I'm doing right now, doing kind of like logo shirts. Oh, cool. So everybody in the family gets one. (laughs) Oh, see, they get the perks. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Out of all the stuff you've worked on or all the mediums that you've worked on, which one of them has been the most successful for you? Um, Well, I think the acrylics, because usually whenever somebody sees it, oh, yeah, that's cool. And then I'm like, yeah, it took me this long. And then they're like, wait, you made it? Oh. Whoa. That's the same thing with like the etching because not a lot of people know how to do that so if they think they like bought it somewhere and then they'll see like my signature on the bottom and they'll be like oh you made it how did you do that do you sell any of them yeah i sell the ones that i have okay if i like it enough i'll sell it i don't like like giving out or i don't like selling something i don't think is good enough have you ever thought of opening an etsy shop or or something you know like an online store yeah, eventually, I think that's, like, if I don't find something specific, like, if the tattoo shop, if that doesn't work out, I think I'll probably end up trying to open something like that. What kind of timeline are you looking at for the tattoo shop? Are you doing something where it's like, I'm going to try for this long to get into that kind of business, otherwise I'm going to try something else? Are you doing that, or are you just kind of right now playing it by ear? Yeah, just by ear. The reason why that's kind of hard, is because with a tattoo shop, once you kind of learn how to do it, you have to sign a contract that you're not going to go work for somebody else because they taught me how to do it. So I'm like theirs for a couple of years. 
Yeah, that's got to be hard. Yeah. It seems like such a such a dedication. And well, you'd be a, apprenticing. You, do you have to sign it when you apprentice, or is it when they finally decide to take you on? No, you, you'll be like an apprentice once you start tattooing. Is kind of like where that line draws, but that that varies with the store. You probably have to work a day job. So how do you balance working the day job and then finding time to create? How do you, how do you find the time? I'll get out of work and then I'll do a couple of hours. Like I'll say, okay, I'm going to do focus on this for like four hours. And then after that, I'll leave it for the next day. Or sometimes what I'll do it, if I know I'm getting kind of behind and just like not drawing for a little bit, I'll save up money and then enough to be good for a, a little bit. And then I'll quit my job or put like a pause. And oh. then I'll have a, a month of vacation and do the eight hours that I'd be at work to sit on my painting. Really? I actually just started working again like Friday. That's kind of interesting. So you actually take the vacation but treat it like you're still, you still have the same hours. Yeah. It's not a bad method. I don't mind that. Yeah, it, it works. Yeah, it keeps you going. It keeps you on a schedule because it's, it's got to be real easy to go like, ah, I'll just do it tomorrow. Yeah, and then that's why I went so long without painting for that work because I almost went like six months. Uh-huh. And then you'll just start to forget, and then it's like your mind just goes somewhere else, and then time keeps passing, and I it's not something that I want to let go of. Mm-hmm. Put a pause on work and just do it. Hmm. Do you have any other friends or groups of people that you hang out with that also have a similar sort of interest that you do? Not that are so into it as I am, but I'll have friends who will be like, oh, yeah, I want to learn how to draw, so we'll just go to the park. Part of the Manona Terrace, they'll just try and sketch or try and paint something, and then I'll do whatever piece I'm working at. Uh-huh. So it's kind of like a little bit of motivation towards everybody else to like, oh, yeah, I'll teach you how to draw. Well, do you do like landscapes and stuff over there, or is it just a nice place to go, nice open space to go to? Yeah, it's just a nice place to go. What kind of stuff like, do you show? I had, uh, one of the more popular ones is the crayon melting. Yes. Tell me about that. I yeah. saw that. I'm glad you brought that up. I forgot that I looked at that. So tell me about the crayon melting. So I'll draw a figure in the middle or wherever on the canvas it'll it'll fit first. Draw it out and then you put like tape over it or wax over it so the crayons don't get on it. Mm-hmm. And then you just kind of glue the crayons wherever you need them on the canvas. And then just with like a blow dryer or any heat, you'll just like melt it. It's a really messy, but it's really fun. Yeah, I, I would assume both. Sounds like <laughs> tons of fun, but at the same time, it's like, oh, of course it's messy. There's one that you have, I think it's called Beauty and the Ugly. That That's a painting. I know that's a different one altogether, but that, it, when you said messy, I was just like, because there's one where it looks like you just slapped something right on the canvas. Tell me about yeah, that Yeah, it was a, a white canvas. So I had to spray paint it to the uh, right shadings of color first. Mm-hmm. I had like these glitter, but it's like really, really fine glitter. I just use like really, really thin paint brushes and just lathered it on where I, the roses were going to be and just let it fall. I had like rusty paint, so I used that to kind of make it ugly. No, I really like that one when I saw it. It stood out to me. It just looks like threw it right on there. I knew there was probably more to it than that, but I, li- I like the way that that, uh, that that came across. So over the years, going from drawing on the TV to ceramics to painting acrylics and all this stuff who would you say kind of were some of your influences over the years that steered you in the direction you're at now definitely my brother and my mom yeah even when it was just something like small they'd be like oh yeah that's so cool and i'd be like yeah it's cool i want to do more (laughs) when i started kind of just growing up and my drawing started getting better if you really put your head into it you can make a lot of money out of this stuff like that Mm mm-hmm so they never kind of let me, they're like, oh, nobody's going to like pay attention to this. I'm just not going to do it. And then they're like, oh, don't be so stupid. You're good at it. Just do it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> they're there to pick you up. That's good. You have the moral support already built in. Yeah. But what kind of artists over the years were you like, ooh, that speaks to me and I want to find out how they did that? Banksy is my biggest one. Yeah. Everybody else, I don't really remember names. It's okay. just like I have a lot of art art pages on my Facebook, so I'll just be scrolling, and whenever I see something I like, I'll just save it, so I can just keep in mind if I ever want to do something inspired by a piece. That's actually kind of interesting. Bookmarking it only on Facebook, that's very simple, but yet kind of effective. Keep it going, because you see somebody, and then you do something, and yeah, that looks really cool, but I would do it like 
this way, I would change this and this. And it just, once you're doing it, it just turns into something completely different. Yeah. And then what other kind of projects or interests would you say that you're pursuing right now? Is there anything coming up? Yeah, I'm just the shirts, the etching, the murals. Um, I've done a couple book covers. Really? Somebody's asked you to do a book cover for something they've written? No, just I'm into dreams a lot. Yeah. So I, I have a dream journal. And usually when people see it, they'll be like, oh, that looks really cool. And then I'll try to get them into it by drawing just like a regular composition book. I'll just draw a cover on it. Like I'll draw their name and just whatever ha- comes to mind on the moment. So drawing directly on books, you're saying? Yeah. I actually just spoke with a science fiction writer recently. And we were talking about the fact that he would go out and find people to create book covers for him. Have you ever thought about offering up that kind of service to people basically saying, if you need a book cover drawn, I can do that for you? I've actually never thought about that before. Yeah, it's something interesting. But I like the fact you had a dream journal, then you drew a cover on it and gave it to the person. Yeah. So the dream journal itself, was it writing or were you trying to express what you were journaling in pictures? Uh, Writing and then if it's like a dream that I have a lot of really vivid dreams. So if it's a dream that I have, I can't get it out of my mind, I'll try to draw it. But I use the book to kind of remember. Huh. This entire thing actually is very interesting to me. Have you ever thought about using those as something to show or display to people? Because I'm sitting here listening to you talk about it and I'm like, oh, I'd love to see that. That that whole thing sounds just like a real intricate maze of different types of stuff going on artistically for you. I I have like the ideas. I'm just kind of waiting to to have more drinks. To actually, do like a series of paintings of my dreams. Yeah. And it would work really well because so I have some paintings that actually have a story behind them. Uh huh. The roses would die in the hand. That one has like a story behind it. Um. So the dreams one would work really well because you you'd see the painting. And then you can read exactly what happened if you, if it's like a, a little, like the picture and then the story. Yeah. That entire thing sounds fascinating to me. I'd love to see that. I would love to see you pursue that. I'd be interested in seeing that. That's what I'm saying. Any plans to do a showing of some of your most current stuff? Hopefully by the end of the month, I'll have one on State Street. I think it's called Yellow Rose. Oh, okay. How did you come about that? The friend I did the mural with. Again, networking. I love it. Do you have a time when you think that might be happening? Not specifically, because I went a couple days ago to view somebody else's work. They were doing like a piece on the Oaxaca War or something like that. And I had gone down to look at them and kind of just looked at a couple of different artists, counted how many pieces they have, so I could kind of have an idea of how it works. Mm Mm-hmm. So I still need a couple more, but once I get them done, I'll, I think that's a go. I look forward to seeing so that. My goal is the end of the month. I really like how she talked about taking days off to work on things and then going back to the job again. Now, I know for most people, including myself, that's not really how we're set up. I have a day-to-day that I go to. But a lot of the people I talk to have part-time or jobs that allow them to have part-time work or work as much as they need or the times they need. Starting from the first interview all the way up, it was people who have an adjustable schedule. It makes me think about adjusting my own budget and finding ways to make money to get by and have the time. I don't know. It's something I'm thinking out loud here, but there's something there. I don't know. Just spitballing right now. My wife and I are actually working on budgeting. We're working on seeing how little we need to get by but still live the way that we want to. And it turns out we've actually cut our budget quite a bit. Maybe we'll talk more about that in the future. I don't know. Now, I hope Selma does actually get the career that she's looking for. I hope she does get to be a tattoo artist. Hell, if I ever actually get a tattoo, maybe I'll have her do it. Actually, I probably should, considering. So I hope you found that as kind of inspiring and kind of regenerating the why you started in the first place, or at least that's what it did for me. It regenerated why I started making art in the first place. I didn't know what I was going to do. She knew more about what she wanted to do than I ever did, and I hope to get that passion back. So thank you, Selma, for talking to me. And if you're enjoying this show, please visit the website at AmericanBandito.com and subscribe or sign up for our newsletter at AmericanBandito.com slash subscribe. You can also read my daily comic journal called Then This Happened on the website, or, as I said before, you can get the collected version of it on Amazon.com slash author slash Tom Ray. 
The music for this show is by Romcom. That's com with two M's. You can hear more at romcomtheband.com. Thank you all for listening. And don't forget, if you're just hearing this show for the first time, subscribe on Apple Podcasts and Google Play. I've still got plenty of people to meet, so I'll talk to you next time. I'm Tom Ray. So long.